So, if you were a PC gamer back in the late 80s, early 90s, you may remember that when you would install a game, you would have some options about what kind of sound output the game would give you. And if you were set up with a relatively basic computer, like I was for most of my childhood, um, your sound output would probably have just been the built-in PC speaker. And I'm running this application on my modern PC. This app is called DOSBox, and it lets your modern computer emulate a old DOS-based computer from the 90s, just a regular old PC from back in the day. And I want to show you guys something that's really cool I'm really excited about, but before I do, it'll be helpful for you to understand why it's so interesting in comparison to what most people, me included, would have had back then. So I'm going to show a good example of that. So here is my computer. I'm going to mount a folder. And now if I go to my C drive, dir, I can go CD, Star Trek, and Setup. So now I'm setting up this game called Star Trek 25th Anniversary. I had this game when I was a kid, and it was great. I mean, certainly as a Star Trek fan, it felt like playing an episode of the original series. And like many people back in the day, my sound was the PC internal speaker. So I'm going to select that, and OK. And now when I say, uh, let's see here, Star Trek, this is what it would have sounded like. So as you can tell, it's recognizably the Star Trek theme song, but it could not be any more rudimentary. It's just beeping out the notes of the song. Just one note at a time, very flat, kind of warbly, doesn't sound great, but you know, it's sound. You're getting the, the gist of it. But what I was always fascinated by was that almost every game I played back in those days had this option for a thing called an MT32, which was a device that Roland made, Roland the synthesizer company. And it was a device that was effectively the brains of a big uh, synthesizer keyboard, but without the keyboard attached to it. And a lot of the composers of PC and video games back in the 90s, they were composing the music for these games using a Roland synthesizer, or sometimes just the box, the MT32, but then the people playing the game usually didn't have that box, and so what they got was that very scaled-down, beepy version of whatever they had composed. So there was this huge disconnection between what people, uh, what the composers were creating and what their audience ended up hearing. And now I'm incredibly excited to be the proud owner of a Roland MT32, which is that audio processing device that the uh, composers would have been using back in the day. That's this box that's sitting under my uh, uh, monitor right now and serving as an iPhone stand at the moment. But this is the Roland MT32. It's got a bunch of buttons and a volume knob on the front. I currently have it connected to my desktop computer using a USB to MIDI interface. And I won't bore you with all the backstory on what MIDI is, but it's an acronym that basically means a way for two electronic musical devices to communicate with each other. It dates back to the, I think, 70s even, certainly the early 80s. But in any case, I've got a USB gadget attached to my computer, which can then feed MIDI information to this box. And MIDI signals, they're not sounds, they're descriptions of sounds. So the box has all the sounds built in. The computer is just sending instructions to this box saying what to do, what sound effects to make for how long and how loud and so on. So if you have the same game and it supports the Roland MT32, which frankly most of them did, what you end up with is a pretty startling difference in terms of the quality of the sound that you get. And as an example, I have the same game, Star Trek 25th Anniversary, but I have it installed in a different version of DOSBox, which I believe is already configured to work with this MT32 that I set up last night. 
So I'm going to turn my volume up a little bit and I'm going to launch this. The only difference is this is the expanded version of the game that included the original actors from Star Trek doing their voiceovers. So you'll hear some speech in this version that you didn't hear before, but ignore that for the moment and just pay attention to the actual quality of the music, thinking back to the beeps that we were just hearing, sort of rudimentary beeps of the Star Trek theme. Now check this out. You may notice the light on the MT-32 start twinkling as it starts receiving its instructions from the computer. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its mission, to explore strange new worlds, to discover new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. So as you can tell, it's, it's a pretty startling difference in terms of the quality of the sound coming out of this machine. It's music. It's not just rudimentary monotone beeps. We're getting a full orchestral soundtrack. And pretty much every PC game you might have ever played growing up or back in the day probably could have sounded the same way if you had had a Roland MT32 hooked up to your computer. So. I'm 25, 30 years late to the party, but man, it's super cool. It took a little bit of tinkering to get it working, but it is such a blast now that it is. Every game I've thrown at this thing sounds incredible. It sounds like how my brain made it sound in my memories. I don't remember these games sounding crappy. I remember them sounding amazing because my brain as a kid was trying to fill in all the missing details. But uh, having the actual hardware today is just really fun. It's super cool. And I should also say, you can do the same thing. You can actually get the same effect with emulation. This DOSBox program that I'm using to play these old games, it can emulate an MT32 and it does a pretty good job of it. You don't need to geek out like I did and buy the box necessarily, but I, I'm a hardware guy. I really wanted to have the box. So it's been a really fun project to get this set up. I have a snazzy new monitor stand and my old games sound amazing. So I hope you guys got a kick out of this. I'm gonna go back and start playing this game. religions known as demons. I don't know how long she can take it, Captain. Arming weapons. Raising shields. Captain, instruments indicate that we have crossed the Romulan neutral zone. Trouble, Captain. Romulans materializing off the port bow. Damage control standing by, sir. Message from the Romulan commander, sir. On screen, Lieutenant. Enterprise, you are in violation of Romulan space. My orders are specific. Unauthorized Federation vessels are to be destroyed. Oh, no! It's the Romulans! Run! how hard this game was.
restart with the game.